afternoon. How can I help y you? Oh. I see. I would say it's a surprise to see you, but I am well aware of this organization's policy on lying. Please find a seat over there and wait until I join you for an examination. Dare to explain how this one happened? I remind you that lying is heavily discouraged in this organization, and if you fail to communicate exactly how you were injured, then the possibility of myself mistreating you and causing further ailment or injury is highly likely. I think you misheard me in my warning about lying. How did a chair get smashed against your ribs? And why are you so calm about it? That is a fair statement. I truly shouldn't be surprised by how frequently I find myself in your company. Perish the thought. You not walking into the medical bay at least once every week through miraculous happenstance? That sounds like a dream. Uh huh. How much would you rate your pain? Your pain tolerance is not of my concern. I am already well acquainted with it. I asked for a rating of your pain. If that's the case, take off that shirt and we can get started with determining treatment. You're not a child nor a stranger to this space. I don't need to assist you based on the rating of your pain. And I've seen you topless many times. Now take off the shirt. I thought so. I should leave you like that for lying to me. Organization policy dictates that all staff relay the truth and nothing but the truth at all times when on site. Which is something you don't seem to have such a great grasp of. But aside from that, Lying to a medical professional is dangerous because you run the chance of a misdiagnosis and mistreatment which could, say it with me, cause further ailment or injury. You are impossible sometimes. Lean back and raise your shirt above the area you're currently feeling pain in. No, your ego does not count. Otherwise, you'd have to throw your shirt outside of this room. And I'd rather not inconvenience the cleaning staff. My oath says I can't try to hurt you physically. It never said I couldn't knock you down five pegs for being a smartass. My bedside manner is typically impeccable. Your frequent visits, however, do not necessitate niceties. It's also company policy that repeated visitors to the medical bay of a certain frequency are to be treated as staff see fit. You'd know that if you read the policy so you could avoid my attitude. Now, hold still. We've gone through this many times already. I don't need to explain what I'm doing to you right now. If you like hearing me talk, then you're already in luck because you'll be hearing me berate you once this examination is over. Innuendos and suggestive comments towards medical staff is disallowed, Agent. You know that. I suggest you help it before you say something in front of a superior and get yourself in trouble. Yes, I am medical staff. You know this? Yes, I am your superior. Whatever line of suggestion it is that you're concocting, stop it now. 
I know you, and by proxy, I know how you think when you step into this office. So it's not hard to tell when you're attempting to flirt with me. Yes, I can tell that you're flirting because you are horrendous at making it anything less than obvious. Agent, if I need to remind you about our policy on lying one more time, then I will contact my supervisor and have you put through a week's worth of rigorous training exercises designed to make you sweat and bleed till you drop. Am I understood? Good. Now are you going to continue your farce or are you actually going to ask me out? I am aware of what the policy on flirting with medical staff is. I am also aware that you don't care about policy and will do it anyways. Now, answer my question. Good. Do it. Ask me out. Your ribs are fractured but luckily not broken. However, your ears are in good shape and you do not appear to have suffered any concussions. So I believe you heard what I said and are of sound mind to know what I'm asking you to do. Yes, I understand you're excited, but if you don't ask me out in the next 10 seconds, I will swiftly change my mind and- Good. Where are we going and what time? Come now, agents. You have to be much quicker to think than spouting ha huh for a response for someone of your standing. Tell me where you want to take me, and when. I don't like fancy restaurants. Try again. You will not be taking me to a fast food joint to dine. Try again, and put some thought into it this time. That sounds agreeable. I could use a walk around after the day I've had. Now with that settled, dress nice. I won't be seen in public with you looking like a parrot who fucked a clown and recently gave birth. Got that? Good. Bring your wallet as well. I usually pay 50-50 on first dates with others. And no, there will not be any arguments against what I said. Make sure your breath smells nice and your hair is well done. I'm amused by you and that amusement has turned into fondness, I think. So I'm doing this to see how I actually feel about you. In essence, I don't know if I like you yet, so we will just have to see. What? Your expression changed. No, oh, there is no anima in the room right now. And furthermore, there is no need to worry about this conversation being recorded by any security devices in this room. Because it isn't actually against company policy. I made that up. Please keep your voice down. It may not be illegal, but I certainly would like to keep my private affairs private. The last thing I need when going about my day is to hear gossip being thrown around about me by my own staff. I lied to you because while you are a competent agent, you are reckless, brash, you act before you think, and you do stupidly impulsive things to get my attention, such as throw yourself into furniture. Don't insult my intelligence. Of course I knew. I always knew you'd been doing that from the start, because I have a doctorate in this field, and I was a forensic pathologist before being brought in to work here. I could always tell how you hurt yourself, because your visits are too frequent to suggest that all of them were preceding any assignments you might have been given, and most of them did not indicate that you were being attacked, but instead you were harming yourself. I said nothing because I wanted to determine why you were doing this. At first I considered that it was just self-harm that went too far, and in that case I was prepared to call a psychiatrist and have you undergo treatment and mandated therapy. 
But then I noted that if that was the case, you wouldn't seek my help for fear of me actually turning you over to the correct channels. And furthermore, you wouldn't be so gleeful each time you had to see me. No, oh, no, I thought it was incredibly stupid of you to do. I also did tell you several times to stop getting yourself into these situations, hoping that you would understand that I knew. But you did not get the hints, and so I let you hurt yourself, hoping you'd stop and be normal about simply asking me out. Yes, I'm quite aware that you are not very subtle, but it's slightly endearing in some way. Yes, I did say that. Now, I'm going to warn you. Should you injure yourself again to come and see me, then I will have you admitted into a psych ward under the pretense of insanity, and have you stripped of your position here. Our organization does not need agents who act foolishly for the sake of an objective. And you are far above that if your performance reports are anything to go by. I am the head of this branch's medical department. Of course I see your performance reports. I need to see them in order to compare them to your physicals and determine that you are of sound mind and body. Which you have somewhat been, excluding this stunt of yours. Well, should I determine that I want to pursue whatever this is, I will be overseeing the appropriate methods to have your physicals, checkups, and examinations done by someone else to prevent any conflicts of interest. I will also be reporting this to HR. I tolerate you, and I would like to at least see that you are not affected financially by my curiosity. Don't thank me. I'm just following procedure. Do not thank me for that either. We're just going on a date to see if we are compatible. Nothing is set in stone, and for all you know, I could completely reject you. I suppose you're right about that. Again, we'll have to see how it goes. You can take your leave now and get ready for our date. Yes, go. I'm sure you need to burn some energy with your excitement, and I'd rather you do it before Gregor comes back. It's already a handful dealing with an excited human. An excited anima is more than I want to handle. Goodbye, Agent. Take care of yourself.